to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden, the artist behind the channel. And this week um, is a mixed media art tutorial that I show you the beginning of my exploration of luscious layers. And um, what you're seeing now is me using up the remnants of the previous page or a previous page and um, I saw my little brayer and I thought well why don't I just roll that in different directions and just start I'm trying to not think just react and make a start uh, my plan is or my intention is to go from um, a beginning layer uh, light, uh, bright colors, back to dark, line, and alternating all of these amazing later layers. And it's the different combination of layers that will result in uh, who knows what. But I'm just going to go with it. I uh, felt the calling of the reds, as you can see. And, of course, I really needed that brighter cadmium yellow deep hue that's the yellow there and of course I will leave the uh, colors in the description uh, in the vi below the video so welcome if you are here uh, first here if you found my channel yes this is awesome I am so glad to, to that you're here and um I've been doing this for quite a while, so I have now over 200 videos, combinations of affirmations, mixed media art, mixed media abstract, abstract and abstract art journaling and affirmation art journaling. And who knows where it's going to expand. Did you notice that because I rolled the prayer, I sort of know from all the taping that I've been doing where the boundaries are and I just didn't find it necessary uh, to tape it off. I thought, well, why don't I just free myself up? This is just a journal after all. And um, no rules, no constraints. And uh, let's see how this goes. Mind you, to protect the paper around it, I did put the um, gloss medium. So then if I did, I can just wipe it off. And I'm loving, uh, I just discovered this, and I know, oh yeah, well I already do that, and oh yeah, this person does that, but it's so different once you start. It's a huge difference in watching, planning, but when you're actually doing it and mixing those colors very quickly, um, it's a whole other ball game. And I am enjoying it because I'm starting to do it more. Uh, not as much as I would like, as I have mentioned before, but one day, very soon, I will be doing this full time. And did you notice, too, that uh, any brayer um, leaves a very interesting mark or texture when the paint is thick? So after knowing that there's some black in there, and I know I wanted to use bright colors because I wanted them to shine through in some areas... Um, underneath the next layers that I have planned. And I did not plan only that I wanted to do some light, then go dark, and then if it's, there's too much dark, go back light again, and then add a glaze, and then oil, uh, oil pastels, and collage. So I chose a smaller amount of collage because it just helps you create better using less and there's just less to choose you don't get overwhelmed with all these choices i also usually choose collage papers that resemble the texture of what's already there so i'm echoing what i've done in paint or in another form and that's another form of repetition so i really love that and look at that um, using, it's not the transparent white, it's just the regular titanium white of Liquitex, using the color shaper and gliding it along, 
knowing that, see how we build? So you're building uh, history, you're building your, you know, your, your knowledge of what your tools do, what different paints do, and um, sp- gave it a spritz of water, even though it's paper, but there's a lot of paint on there now, so we don't need to worry, because I wanted it to be transparent or translucent. And then, of course, drying each layer. So let's see, what layer do you think I'm going to put on next? What would you choose? I would love to hear your choices in the comments below. (laughs) And if any of you out there, my regular subscribers who comment, thank you so much. I love hearing from you. And, you know, I wouldn't do that, but oh, wow, did it ever turn out very interesting? Like, yeah, it does. Okay. You know, I thought I was going with black right now. I forgot. So now I'm going with a really bright hue, uh, adding a lot of water, so I, I would consider this a glaze. And noticing it's bubbling. So whenever I do that, I try to remember to spritz it with uh, my alcohol, uh, isopropyl alcohol, 70%, just the same things that you would put on a cut or anything else. And it just leaves it with a slight bubbling. Depending how much water is there or how how much of a layer is there. And it's really interesting. Um, I have, I'm just in the middle of adding those layers onto my eight pieces. If you are part of my Facebook group, don't forget to check, check us out. There's a lot of sharing going on. And um, that's going to shift very pretty soon as I'll have more time and I want to do sort of a monthly uh, Facebook uh, exploring play time with the group and uh, loosening up and then seeing what we can do with what we discover and then coming back and sharing. So I think I want to do that once a month, sort of a play date. Let me know if you're interested in, in something like this. And I will also, of course, be asking my Facebook group. So now that that's super light, so the values have calmed it down. And I'm sure um, once I discover other ways of applying this. So if uh, knowing this now. If I wanted it to be less stripy, I would definitely be using a wider color shaper or my catalyst wedge or even the uh, on a canvas or, you know, a larger piece, a larger substrate, the window rubber cleaner thing. Uh, I'll have to show that and I'll have to get uh, that's coming up soon. And this work and just this play. Um is leading the way towards that and loving this manganese quinacridone manganese with black makes this really rich dark red and it's very transparent especially using a color shaper so have any of you tried um, uh, the color shapers i just ordered this pack of four uh, four different widths I think it's up to two and a half inches, all the way down to one inch, uh, depending if you're on a metric or imperial, doesn't matter. And uh, still getting used to it. I can't wait to use it on larger canvases, but then, of course, I'm going to be using a window wiper tool. I've been uh, just exploring how you can make different swooshes, and I love that. Um, I love the idea of making an unexpected mark, knowing your intention is it's going to be transparent or translucent and over maybe a certain area, but you just don't know how, how it's going to turn out in its shape or edges. I love that. So, and I'm loving the color shaper because you can really control your edges. And I think that's why mostly... 
I didn't worry about, um, I just went ahead and I think I just forgot that I didn't tape the edge or I don't remember if it was intended, but it's great. It's all good. So this one, I usually go dark to light from the bottom up, but this one, because it's such dark, rich, lush layers, I wanted to uh, carry on that black and see how the brayer lifts. It's the greatest, and I know I say this all the time when I'm using my brayer, but that's okay. And just wiping that edge. Really loving that texture on the bottom left. And I have it right in front of me, the finished product, of course. But it, I mean, I even surprised myself as to the just the different contrasting layers that I applied with the, with the interest, with the results. Unexpected, just because I haven't done them. So, you know, but the more you do, you go, okay, so if I do a light and a dark, you have some idea. And there's at least, oh, we're up to seven layers, I think, on this page. And I wanna build more. Maybe a layer would be a very small area. Maybe it would be very thin. Maybe it would just be marks that push back some shapes. That's still a layer. And you see now because I put that on there, I'm just cleaning up that edge because I really like the clean edge. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, that, that got smudged by accident, but I knew I could just bring it back. And for any, um, if you want to even build up more and on paper and scrape back uh, in some way, you know, without damaging the substrate, you can put a coat of the clear gloss gel, the very fluid one, in between each layer so that you can rub away as well uh, to get the effect. And that's what I do on my wooden panels because I use um, alcohol and um, steel wool or sandpaper. So that's the advantage of working on a harder surface. And um, I will be starting those, I think they're coming up very soon. And we will go on another journey of four paintings or four panels, uh, still under luscious layers. So you see how these, the, the purple or that dark quinacridone red now has created in some way a shape coming through in a dynamic way from the top to the bottom. And then what I would now, I would have added some black texture uh, with some stenciling. Even a Posca marker, I could have added that. So just keeping those notes, and I'll write those on the, um, on, the, on the other side, of course. And I never show any of those. I don't know if, any, if you'd be interested, which would be on the opposite page here at the end or after I'm off camera. Uh, if there's certain things I want to remember that worked so I can do it the next time. So I use these as a sort of a resource uh, journal while creating and exploring at the same time. It's like, oh yeah, how did I do that? Um, but I know I have mentioned in previous um, videos that I'll be creating these little cards and I'm looking, trying to look for thicker paper that comes in a bunch. So I don't know if my art store has it or if Amazon has it or tags where I wanna use like two colors, three colors and then mix them and play with them and then I you know, put these things on a hoop and have them hanging around as a reference. So they're small, they're there. And I know other artists use binders, but if I have everything away in a binder, I'm not gonna use it because it's not out. Because I'm such a visual. If it isn't out, I'm not gonna remember to use it. And here comes the wonderful McCall's sewing patterns. I used to be such a sewer. Oh, love sewing. So I'm going to start bringing uh, the line stitching 
uh, back into my work. And I know I haven't used it in my art journaling, but um, once I'm off for the summer, I will have time to gather, explore, and share more of what I'm doing in the studio. That's just wrapping paper, a tissue paper that came with a gift, but it, it has like little gold feathers or feather designs on it. And notice now that's the side. So I know it'll work because when I, and I don't know if I trim it or even end up using it, but if, um, if you do, um, the tissue papers and the tracing papers just melt and they're just a lovely subtle veil. So what I'm thinking of is bringing some of that shape across. And in this one, and I don't know how I started just tearing. I noticed that um, a lot of people are busy making these shapes and um, I just, I, I don't like a pre-planned shape so much. As of course, you know, you have your circles, but notice the circles I use or the stencils that I use have an organic quality. So maybe that's why I do it. Um, what shapes do you like to use? What's your go-to? What are you always using and why? This, these are the things we need to think about now. How can we shift that? How can we, you know, how can we change that up? So that orange piece that's there, that orange pink piece is, uh, I believe, tissue, pa uh, no, tracing paper, just painted on. And it's very thin and delicate. And I never really ended up using it. No, it's just sitting there just to see. I wasn't sure, I love the color. It's a little overpowering, and maybe I want the neutral to be just more predominant. Um, actually secondary with the bright and rich, luscious pinks and purples. So I've been playing in the direction of that, and I finally decided I did like it that way, and I love that. See, this piece is just newsprint paper rolled with leftover paint from my palette with my brayer. And I absolutely love those overlapping textures and the natural, like the dots of the brayer stretches out and makes these sort of ovaly shapes, like shadows or stains or something. That's I think that's why I like it. See, when we stop and think about it, we can figure it out, and that information is helpful. Um, what's working in your art? What, you know, what works? What, what doesn't work? How could you change it the next time? So as I've said before, when you're playing, you, you're spinning in, you're exploring, and then you spin back out, and then check it out. Don't analyze it to death, but you're just saying, oh, okay, I really like that. Write down a note, put a sticky in there, depending if, you know, what kind of journal it is you're making. And my journals, um, as I've reorganized my studio, they're, they're starting to pile up, but they're really big journals. They have at least, oh, I don't know, what, 40 pages in them? Let's see, how many pages are in these things? 30. They have 30 pages. All of the Canson mixed media or watercolor. I love those ones, and then I love to make, uh, but I will be getting and showing you different types of journals that I like to make. So the dictionary again, an old, no, an encyclopedia. I love the paper. It's quite delicate, um, it tears easy, but yet it's strong and it's very glossy, I guess because this is an older one. So all the images, plants, birds, and um, ancient history, which I love. And I, I was still wondering, I thought, why did I not trim that off? 
I don't know why I didn't trim that off. Probably I thought, well, I can cover that up with the neutral paint anyway. But maybe because the value or the tone of it was very similar, who knows? And then this other interesting shape. Uh, ancient geometry, ancient history. It's, it's so cool. I just love it. Love just putting those little pieces in my art. And when, when I use like the dark blue against a black or the dark purple against a black, it just has this glowing, it's more the feeling of the two um, um, contrasting with each other or, or it's a very subtle contrast, but it's, it's really cool. Really liking the pastel on this piece. And of course, after that, um, a thin layer of gloss medium you can put on and follow the lines or the areas with the brush and then it'll be sealed. So I am going to and finally have time to shift everything, um, go in some new directions, making my course this summer. It's going to be a free course and just deciding what is it that I do that will be useful, uh, help beginners journal how to, how to go about this? Oh, there comes my studio dog, Dexter. Hi, Dexter. <laughs> so I just was sitting with the hexagonal stencils and I thought you know what if I do that it's going to cover up all of my subtle edges and no it's too big no it just didn't feel right so I didn't do it and I chose the more horizontal uh, have I chosen those yet no no or I will but first I need some stronger yellow oxide with the cadmium hue uh, deep. And I can't wait to do what I'm just doing there in a much larger way on a larger, con larger canvas or substrate with uh, one of those larger um, palette knives or the ones that um, uh, drywalling, you know, really getting into the tools from the hardware store to really, you, when you go across it, um, the texture that it creates. And that's called scumbling with the brush. You're really putting the brush on its side, so it's picking the surfaces, the tooth of the texture on your painting. So here comes some stenciling. And so if you want to add the subtlety, pattern, or visual texture, actually physical and visual texture to your work, um, using stenciling near something of a similar value, uh, and especially if you're liking your composition, your intuitive composition that's turned out, you won't change it. But you see how it, it just stretch that a bit more so the eye now comes down and it's uh, using overlapping. So I've just realized that's what's happening and I want to do that in my work. And then having repetition, but in maybe different values. Notice the one on the top is a higher contrast I still think it would have looked better in, in a richer uh, magenta. What is that? Anyway, the color is down there. Um, quinacridone, quinacridone magenta. And uh, it would have really... So I can add a little glaze. You can always do that later. 
If you're not sure, stick with a neutral value and then you can add your glazing here and there throughout uh, rather than going with one choice. So coming in with, um, I was thinking of the edges of that, but the ratio, the, the scale of those circles was too big. And I'm just coming across and I just, I just love, you know, the pipes, old pipes from who knows what work. And I know it's at a slight angle, but I sort of like that. Now, if you're, if I wanted it straight across and some work really needs that, I would have made little marks on the side or like in my other video, used a piece of paper, make sure it was square with the piece and then followed its edge across. And just picking up some more of those pinks, getting that eye to move around, that she, just that little bit made such a difference. And then coming in with some white, yes. White's important. It just depends how much you wanna use and of course where. Now, I'm not sure about those. It does help the eye. Maybe if I made it a little narrower in that area, probably would have been more beneficial, but I can scrape it. I'm doing that right now. Look at that. And I'm narrowing down those dots. That is so much better. I was right. See how they don't come over? They're more on the right. Definitely helped. Okay, so we're coming up to, you know what, my finishing touches. I just love this feeling. And I love the pink, um, that sort of ephemeral writing. I don't know if I pronounced that properly. Love that. And of course, I thought I love it up there. I want it in all the other black areas, just a little bit. Cool. Okay, so this has been a wonderful exploration in luscious layers. I hope you enjoyed this one. I certainly learned a lot and I really thought to finish it up, it just felt a little empty up there and I wanted to continue with the purple and of course, finish up with my little dots. Um, more dots to come in a different way. Uh, this is not a Posca marker, and I ordered a whole big pack of those. I don't know, they just, not a good quality. If anyone else beside, knows besides the Posca markers for writing with the white acrylic pens, um, please leave me uh, the brand and share what you might know. Always loving uh, these little tips. And exactly, that's what I mean. Now, it's just off-center, but I really like that. And, of course, drawing all those layers. I'm loving these colors. I'm loving the richness. And um, I hope you do, too. And please leave a comment below. Don't forget to um, hop over to my Facebook group, my Instagram, my shop, and my website, um, where there's lots more. And yes, so notice that really helped. It just made it straighter, and now the eye goes up into that corner because of that slight increase in contrast. And it goes around, so now there's a full, and I don't know if I would have increased that black further up under that shape, um, just a little bit. I might do that right now while I'm sitting here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this page, and it inspires you to 
explore luscious layers on your own. And we're going to just sign this. And I'm calling it luscious layers just because those are the things I want to learn how to do. Okay. Thank you, and I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share.